Welcome to the Investing Podcast presented by Tusk Media. This is Outsider Trading, an audio and video deep dive into the people, places, and things that we find most interesting in the market. Hello, welcome to the Investing Podcast uh, presented by Tusk Media. We're back. We're going to be doing these more regularly throughout the coming weeks, months, and hopefully years. Um, but to kick off, kind of kick off this year, I want to talk a little bit more about Macy's and Kohl's news that we got overnight. Um, after the close yesterday, both Macy's and Kohl's came out. They said that sales were weaker than they had thought. Both of them tried to argue that it was still within their guidance range. Nevertheless, they had to bring down guidance. Um, so that is not a good situation for these retailers to begin to be in. Uh, consider just a few months ago, uh, these retailers came out and said things were actually better than expected. And you saw Macy's and, and Kohl's and Michael Kors all ripped to the upside. Um, turns out not to be the case. Both, all, all the department stores have all these different initiatives going on. Uh, Macy's is selling real estate assets and they're also doing, they, they, they said that this year was going to be a transition year, but it's looking like that's going to continue to bleed through. And for reasons I'll talk about later, I think that'll be even longer than what the current management teams say uh, it, will, it will take for these department stores to turn around. So if we go into the details, um, Macy's comp sales declined by 2.1%, and on an own basis, the comp sales declined by 2.7% in the November and December period combined. Uh, the right around Thanksgiving and right before Christmas, there was some strength, but overall, it was a fairly weak period for Macy's. For Kohl's, uh, you had a similar story, strong sales on Black Friday during the week before Christmas, offset by softness in early November and December. I think some of that softness in early November was well expected. Um, there were countless articles written about that and saying how c consumers were deferring purchases until after the election where there would be some more confidence coming in and where they'd feel more comfortable about actually getting out of the house instead of just watching the political news uh, all day. Um, so you did see that improve into Black Friday, and you did see strong in the week before Christmas, but absent that, things were significantly worse than expected. And as you saw, the companies got it down as a result. Because of the companies got in down, you're seeing the stocks sell off by about 10, I think 15% now for Kohl's, 14%, something in that, in the pre-market trading. Um, so they're definitely getting punished today. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the areas of strength and weaknesses that they saw in the business. Kohl's was more upfront about exactly where they're seeing the pockets of strength and the pockets of weakness. Um, and not very surprising, men's home and footwear were the strongest categories and accessories were the most challenging. This is for Kohl's. Um, similarly for Macy's, uh, men's and women's and children's performed well particular strength in active and cold weather merchandise. Um, Macy's also saying that sales were strong in fine jewelry, furniture, and bedding, which kind of ties into what Coles was saying about home goods. Um, and so that's, that's, so that's good news, but obviously there's more than offset by weakness in accessories. So by accessories, Coles is talking about a lot of handbags not selling as well. Macy's actually called out um, handbags and watches explicitly. So just to give you a big piece of anecdotal information, I was in the Atlanta airport on uh, the day before Christmas Eve. So I guess this was Christmas Eve Eve or something like that. Um, and they had, they obviously have a number of shops there. Um, they had a Michael Kors store. And bear in mind it's about 9 a.m. So more people are coming in. It's right before the Thanksgiving, uh, before the Christmas break. Uh, so it's, it's fairly crowded airport. No one is even looking at the core store. Handbags are done, it seems, to, to a large extent. So word of advice for men out there, don't get women handbags because they're obviously not buying them. 
Um, it's just word, word for the word for the wise there. Um, but that's hurt, hurting maces and colts. Important to note that this. So you got to look when you want you want to extrapolate this to other companies. You have to look at where the pockets of weaknesses are. So am I going to sell TJX on this? Probably not, because TJX is more levered to home goods and. The, to the extent that sales are weaker in Macy's and Kohl's, TJX is going to be taking that inventory and reselling it um, and potentially allocating it better than Macy's and Kohl's did. Um, so you see, you see some of these excuses that they're using um, about changing customer behavior. Bottom line is that department stores have been in a downtrend as part of the retail consumer budget for the last 20 years. Uh, almost almost 30 years. I'm, I'm dating myself now, but uh, we have data going back to 1992 and retail sales as a percent, department stores as a percent of retail sales have declined from about 8% to like 2.5% now. Um, and so we have some charts on this. This is a secular trend. This is not a cyclical trend that's just, that's bouncing up and down. This is a secular trend. The way you can see that is that as a percentage of the budget, it's declined. So the consumer will go in cycles. But, and some businesses will remain relatively constant over time as a percent of sales. That would be uh, inherently cyclical business. It'll vary exactly with the retail consumer budget. This trend has been just persistently declining. So that's a secular trend. That's something that you don't really want to try time the bottom of it. Because if you try to time the bottom of it, this is exactly what people have been doing for 20 years and they haven't been doing too well on it. So keep an eye out on that. Um, there we have a chart on auto sales. You can see how that's more of a cyclical issue. It varies quite a bit, but it, you know, it gravitates toward that 15 to 20% of the retail consumer budget. Um, and then you have the positive secular story and that's non-store retailers. So you see a lot of those department store sales switching to non-store retails. And that's a trend that has continued even through end of 2016. Um, so Macy's is looking to continue to shed assets and sell some of the real estate. Now, when you, Macy's is selling real estate, and a lot of people think that's a good way to more effectively allocate capital. My thinking is that you know if they are selling real estate, then they are inherently admitting that they are not the highest and best use for this property, which is an indictment on the forward trajectory of their business. Um, but you look at some of the real estate that Macy's has, and you look at the Herald Square asset in New York. And I was just there a month and a half ago. And it's just, it's an enormous store that, that really dates itself. I mean, this is not a 21st century uh, building where you want to go and buy product. I mean, that's just not how, how it operates now. We're much more mobile, much more... Uh, efficient and the tastes are changing so much more that you just don't go to a department store that takes up three floors in a whole city block. I mean, it just doesn't happen. So Macy's continuing to sell uh, real estate um, and a lot of people like to value it on that. My guess for where they're just on a real estate value they should be is around the $30, maybe high 20s. Um, so you could look at that as a margin of safety, but then also remember that a lot of businesses that are in decline, um, they tend not to liquidate when they have a net cash balance, or they don't, tend not to liquidate at the best time. So just bear that in mind. Um, so where I would be buying and selling the stocks, I wouldn't want to own either as a long-term investment. I think that Macy's has problems just in their... Um, you know, in the, in the space where they're located. They complained a lot last year about uh, foreign tourism spend was down because of the strength in the U.S. dollar relative to the, especially the euro. So they should have had an easy comp, but they, they weren't able to do that. They said they did have some, Cole said they had some strength in the southeast, mid-Atlantic, and northeast, which would imply that tourism spend was up. But what does that say about the west, midwest, etc.? So I would not be buying either stock here. Uh, I think that Macy's is probably worth a trade around uh, if you can get it in the high 20s. 
maybe coals in the high 30s, um, but really just for a trade. Uh, and I might need to not even do that. So take it for what you will. 2017 is another year. It'll be interesting to say what, hear what these uh, the management teams of these companies say when they report actual earnings. Uh, inventory will be continue to be important to watch. Um, so keep an eye on that. We'll give you an update. But right now, not good news for Mason and Coles and. The tail of the tape is that, you know, this is not good news and the stocks are down significantly. This has been the Investing Podcast by Tusk Media. Follow us on Twitter, like us, download the podcast, and subscribe. Thank you. Tusk Media is a subsidiary of Narwhal Capital Management. Ratings and reviews of Tusk Media content are not to be construed as endorsements of opinions, analysis, or services offered by Tusk or its parent company. The opinions and predictions shared here are our professional beliefs at the time of publication. We are not under duress from any of the corporate entities mentioned. This is not a solicitation to take any particular action. Although we are investment advisors, this information should not be considered investment, legal, or tax advice. We strive to be as impartial, insightful, and accurate as possible. We base our opinions, analysis, and calculations on information we believe to be reliable, but we cannot guarantee its accuracy. We can, however, guarantee that our opinions will sometimes be flat out wrong due to a variety of factors. Employees and clients of Narwhal Capital Management may or may not hold positions in the securities detailed and may or may not hold these positions in the future. A full list of all securities purchased, sold, or held during the 12 months preceding the date of this publication can be provided upon request. Unless otherwise noted, all data accessed via MarketWatch or the Bloomberg Terminal. Past performance does not guarantee future results. A copy of Narwhal's form ADV is available at the SEC's website, www.advisorinfo.sec.gov, or from Narwhal upon written request.